Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is another happy Elf League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. And today we are refreshing your memory. Going through different world championships. It's always a excellent piece of trivia to go through these world championship rosters. Can you name all five? Can you name what all the skins are? We're specifically highlighting the guys that you may have forgotten have claimed that world championship title. Oh, this is a fun one to go back down memory lane and look at this one because, yes, every time you're looking at these rosters, you're taking in that nice old memory juice of thinking back of these amazing runs at world championships, our champions of champions. And, yes, there always is one player that seems to slip through the cracks, seems to be forgotten. What is it, that skin line? Oh, yeah, what did, which one did he pick? Those type of guys. Let's go through that list. And we're going furthest back first, and right away, it's a little caveat, maybe a bit of a cheater to even call Season 1 Worlds. We know that that is a highly contested point. And honestly, that entire Fnatic roster, I would be shocked if most people can name uh, any of them. But we're going to go with the most well-known guy. I don't think a lot of people know and remember that technically, Xpeke is a world champion. Riot Games counts it. Even if it was played in Freak's basement, they're still putting that one up on the board. And you best believe the rest of Fnatic are putting that one up on the board. Yes, Xpeke, a world champion. I think a lot of people still, you know, there is that divide in the community on what they think about season one, whether it is a legitimate world championship or not. As, we, as I laid out, Riot Games does, Xpeke gets his ticket onto this list. And remember, he wasn't playing mid lane. He was playing top lane. He was matching up, getting solo bolos against Soaz. And, uh, you know, season one meta was, there wasn't such thing as meta. We got Malzahar and Karthus top. Yeah, very, very, very different. And especially different to the Xpeke that would then carve out the rest of his career and some major iconic moments, of course, uh, as that comes through being the superstar that he develops into early on very beginning for so many people yes feeling it out no such thing as a meta you just got to have the skills to get it done and expect and the rest of season one fanatic they got it done when it counted most and he had to miss some games because his flight was delayed again we're talking season <laughs> one things things are a little different as opposed to international events now for riot jump ahead to 2013 the first title for SKT, and obviously, Faker, you're going to remember, Bangy's obvious, Impact, Piglet, come over to the LCS afterwards, but I think the name that isn't so household on this roster is Mr. Pooh Mandu in the bot lane, part of that 100-acre Winnie the Pooh bot lane. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Pooh Mandu, one of the greats, and absolutely one that any T1, any SKT fan needs to brush up on their history and understand the role that he played in the beginnings of this dynasty and what it really emerged into how he was able to play with this lineup and what point you know again early on in the time of t1 when you needed some leaders to step up mr pumandu is absolutely my leading case for that and he was kind of i mean rookie Baker wasn't a veteran leader yet. Pumandu was very much seemed like the captain of this squad. He would eventually become uh, one of the coaches over at SKT, then T1. But yeah, him and Piglet were absolutely lethal at this world championship. The Zyra was what was super meta, and that's obviously the world skin that he would go on to have. And I think he just you know, wasn't around as long as the other four members of this SKT core, and that's why he kind of fades a little bit compared to the other guys. I, I also think, hey, of course, those those T1 skins, those SKT skins of that time is obviously a little bit dated compared to the recent ones that we get out and how fully fleshed out they are. I still will say that Zyra skin, that Pooh Mandu one, it does hit it just a little bit special because of, again, knowing how oppressive, how aggressive he was able to play on this champion. It's uh, the first few years of World Skids were definitely full jank. You know, Fnatic one we didn't even get <laughs> till years after they said, I guess we should go uh, revamp and give them something there. But now we're going to 2014, which is the iconic 
Samsung White Squad. You had, you know, Dandy and Mata. You were talking about best in their role, maybe best in the world. Same could be said for Imp at the time. Pawn was slaying both Dade and Faker in head-to-head -head matchups. And then you go, and their top laner. That he was that guy. He was pretty good too, but there always seems to be a guy that people say, wow, he got carried on this stacked roster. We are talking Looper in the top lane. And listen, watch highlights from this world championship. The dude did not get carried. He's playing Singed, Akali, Cassidy in top lane. This is a different time of the Looper of 2014 that is able to capture the World Championship compared to the Looper I think a lot of people have as the last recent memory. Maybe some Echo Fox type of days over in the LCS. That ain't the Looper. That ain't the Looper that managed to make one of the best World Championship skins that I think is in existence. I will defend that one. The Samsung White uh, singed up in that top side. I, I will always rage to many singed things, many things going on, not chasing singed, I get it, all these things. I'll never rage against Samsung White singed in that top side. Honestly, one of the OG singed players in general, he had some insane flanks in that world championship, he had some insane proxying, which of course is singed 101 if you're learning how to do that pick, but yeah, First, he went to RNG, had a decent run there, and then the Echo Fox disaster. You know, most people associated with Echo Fox ended uh, in disaster. But honestly, there was too much spotlight to go around on the Samsung White roster, and he was kind of faded into the background, even though at the time he was one of the best top leaders in the world. I think it's one of those ones where I look back and, I, and there is, you know, some sort of, uh, of kind of bitterman or maybe a level that wasn't reached for him as a player or able to be sustained as that player at that top level for long enough, but very much so. You got to look at that peak, at that hit, and that hit is that world championship you capture in 2014. 2015 now, as we move forward, it's obviously a lot of SKT teams. It's, it's hard to not know every single member of the roster on SKT when, number one, you had a lot of returning faces, a la... Bengi and Faker, but we're going to the substitute. And I know it's easy to cop out and just put the sixth man for most of these rosters because a lot of the time they didn't play any games, but Easy Hoon was playing games. And whenever you lock in that SKT Azir, I think most people are assuming that that's a Faker skin, but put some respect. That's Mr. Easy Hoon represented. Where do you think he learned how to be that sifting shant sans emperor out there shuffling around making these type of plays? It's picking it up off of Easy Hoon throughout all these scrims, everything in that time. One of the things that I think that leads Easy Hoon even having the impact that he did throughout that world championship, throughout his time with T1, that leads people to forget it just is that faker effect that shadow that he's casting because 2015, it's a big shadow absolutely in 2015 is the year where app it skyrockets to insane levels of what faker is doing and the type of stardom that he is destined for so it does cast that shadow over what easy hoon was able to contribute which don't mistake were key crucial victories for SKT on their way to capture, capturing this championship and developing Faker into that mid lane leader that he would become in 2016 to lead them to another championship. Absolutely, Easy Hoon, a big part of this one. And you're right, a lot of people thinking that it is Faker, given how good he is on the Azir, how much he plays it in the LCK. Uh uh, it's your boy Easy. And Easy Hoon was still 4-0 at the World Championship. They were winning LCK titles in 2015, 3-0 in the finals, and Faker didn't even play. Uzi Hoon, Easy Hoon's 3-0 in people in these matchups. He has one of the greatest quotes interviews of all time, asking about how this two-man unit in the mid lane is working, and he kind of stumbles through it and says, well, maybe, I guess the reason perhaps is because I'm good. <laughs> That? God damn! Well man. said, man. Hey, just slamming it down. And when you got the type of moves that leads you to picking up that crystal clean Azir SKT World Championship skin, you're darn right you're pretty good, Mr. Easy Hoon. No question. He did level up Faker to uh, his career. Obviously, Faker ascended to new heights after that. But yeah, Easy Hoon after SKT, 
not so much. But that 2015, he's part of that world's run. He earned that title absolutely throughout the whole year and at Worlds itself. 2016, it's another SKT and another, he's not a sub because he was the starter for most of the year. Maybe the most heavily criticized and flamed player in the history of SKT. And you and I both know that <laughs> that's a long list, but we're talking about blank. All people, people seem to remember from 2016 is that Bangy comes in and saves them in that Rock series. But Blank played 10 games. They both played 10 in the jungle, picked up wins in the finals as well for them. Don't disrespect this guy's whole career. There was a time in 2016 you're talking about him as the most exciting player on SKT. It's kind of crazy to go back and look at that 2016 run and yes, examine Blank in the jungle and realize his contributions, his consistency that actually was there throughout that event and obviously throughout the course of the whole year to that point for T1, but it all gets mixed up and thrown away by so many people because of the way things went in that rock series, because Bengi's got to step in, because of course, there's the story of him playing the Nidalee in that do or die, all these type of things that lead to forgetting about the contributions that Blank did and laid out here for the T1 squad throughout this 2016 season. Look at that, that lobby crimson red goodness that is the SKT1 uh, Zach skin in the jungle. That's, That's another reason like. he's forgotten is because he got a Zach skin. You know, I think 10 people bought that skin. I, I, this is before the days where players started to think about, hmm, which champion is going to sell the most skins? Oh, a Kali, oh, a Sile, you know, whatever <laughs> it's going to be. This is not what Blank was thinking when you're dialing up a Zach as your skin. It's exactly what the next dude on this list was thinking, and he was quoted with it. We're talking Cuvay. On Samsung Galaxy 2017, he said, lock me in that NAR skin. I know people are going to be playing NAR and they're going to buy this skin. Problem for him is NAR has 25 skins. So there's a, a lot of options to pick. Uh, but QV at times was a top three, sometimes even higher top laner for multiple years. But again, a star-studded World Championship roster. You have an ambition in that heroic final run. Ruler's Ascendance into 80 carry GOAT status. Crown was an actual rival to Faker Core. JJ becomes an icon for the LCS. There's always a guy who seems to be forgotten. And for this Samsung roster, 100% is cute. And it's kind of crazy to think that he's one of the guys here that is gonna be on this list, but it is that goes to show, doesn't matter how good the roster is doesn't matter how memorable the roster is there still is going to be this one guy that falls through the cracks enters into this type of territory and that is cubay and someone that carved out his name taking the task of a lot of these top laners in the lck always being there always being a challenge in the big matchups that were always brewing leading up yes it wasn't the telecom wars but t1 and samsung galaxy it was brewing it was absolutely getting to that point where you could see that there was that rivalry and he was always that answer, always that thorn in that top side that T1 would have to roll through. Mr. Cuve picking up that NAR skin. You say there's a lot of NAR skins, which yes, there absolutely is. I will argue that Samsung Galaxy NAR is a top tier NAR skin. Gets overlooked too much, I think. Uh, that's the next video. We'll rank every NAR skin <laughs> top to bottom. Uh, full power ranking. We'll have Armood on as a guest. You know, oh, expert. perfect. <laughs> expert in the yeah. field uh but cuba uh. definitely deserved the nar skin he had some fantastic uh, performances specifically at worlds on that pick 2018 is a guy that i think people have chosen to forget knew he was there but kind of repressed it from their memory we're talking about balon in the bot lane another guy who gets flamed to no end and he did have a steep fall off the cliff performance wise after worlds but hey Rakan, he was probably the best Rakan at this tournament, and he's got the skin to prove it. I mean, can you really blame people for feeling this way about Balan when his own darn teammates, his own friends, are blaming him for this type of level? Yes, IG Balan stepping into the stage. And it's one of these ones where it's kind of crazy, because if you know the story, you know that this IG Rakan skin is for Balon and you know the performances, 
how could you ever forget this guy these engages are so disruptive so game changing for the side of ig and so consistent in how annoying it was for the other squad to deal with that is what Bowland brought to the table really one of these players that of course you can look back and and nitpick and criticize but during this run during this time he did absolutely what was necessary for his squad to get to that next level there's no doubt in my mind about the contributions he made towards this ig championship on to 2019 and the theme of maybe weak side or less attention to the top side comes through again with fpx gimgoon on the top side you know doing be maybe the most charismatic personality we have in the scene stole all the headlines tn playing at a world-class level as well gimgoon didn't get much attention i think people didn't even realize that he was a korean import over on fpx but he was often the liability or weak point of fpx and they were the classic example of the sum is greater than the parts Oh, man, this is one of those ones that bugs me, that he falls through the cracks like this, Mr. Gimgoon, because his contributions, his type of form that he had to get this World Championship skin, that gangplank up in that top side, yes, sir -y. Very deserving player, one of the ones that I don't like getting forgotten by time. I think part of that is just the whole FPX victory and everything that that run kind of how it ended, of course, with the finals and how dominant they were. And then, you know, maybe a little bit about kind of revisionist history, thinking back on the next couple of years that went through going, oh, but maybe these guys really weren't that good. Oh, is it good enough type of thing? All those type of labels getting slapped on. Uh -uh. Push it out for me, my man. My dude, Gim Goon, you go back in time. You look at the way that he is playing. He is changing that landscape, that type of level that is going to be necessary to dominate that top side in the LPL. He is the very big start of that one for me to get to the point where we're at now, where we got these titans and monsters to deal with. I think the biggest thing with a lot of these guys maybe falling to the wayside is the theme is after the world's run they kind of fade into obscurity gim goon uh, i don't even remember if he played the next split but he retired very shortly after that world championship then they're picking up khan in the top lane and it's oh my god exciting khan yeah yeah yeah, carry top laner so world's peaks and then a lot of these guys ride off from the sunset by the way that's the way to do it but often we're kind of forgetting about them same could be said for the 2020 member on this list that is dom Juan, not d plus not dom Juan kia just dom Juan in 2020 and wasn't deft in the bot lane no nope. wasn't viper wasn't anybody that you remember it was ghost guys and remember ghost subbing in for nuclear was actually the change that brought dom Juan to a world championship level and we still decided to disrespect the guy it's the catalyst that gets things going here for Damwon to make that change, to be that turnaround, to be able to operate at that elite level, that elite level necessary to push it all the way as the world champions in 2020. And yes, Mr. Ghost is forgotten for his contributions to it. And he kind of falls in, as you said, that, that type of you know trajectory where it is that downfall after you find this type of success. Ghost has been someone that has floundered through the LCK, even going down into the challenger scene and then getting back up and then not really finding it through. I, I, I'm just so bothered by it because I think that the potential has still been there for someone like Ghost to be even more of a contribution for a team, to start developing even further than the Ghost that won a world championship. It's disappointing because we haven't got there is one of the things that we got to realize and look at. But let me give you a nice sweetness to end this sandwich here. And that is your boy Ghost. He's got one of my favorite skins on this list. No doubt about it. You got the Jin bias coming through your boy busting out the good skin. Yeah, Jin was completely busted that world's run. Uh, you'll remember and I get that Ghost and Barrel often were the weak side for Damwa when you had Nuggery and Showmaker at their peak levels, but they fit the role perfectly, and that just means they weren't getting the highlights or the accolades that some of the other uh, players on the squad were. But again, it's it's playing the team role perfectly, and respect to Ghost for that. They were never really a liability in that bot lane, so some respect on Ghost, of course. Again, completely changed the trajectory of this Damwa roster. 
Then we get to the last one on this list. And now 2021 is pretty fresh. So I think most people still remember who these guys are. But in a couple years, I guarantee you, a trivia question is going to be, who was the top laner for EDG's championship run in 2021? And why did he play 11 Graves games? Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to end the show like this. You're bringing back all the memories of 2021. And yes, the oppressive Graves top lane meta that we just saw steamroll through. And Flandre used to full extent for EDG capture their world championship this is a tough one because this is still a player that has contributed well and hasn't had i think a comparable drop off compared to some of these other players on this list it is one where i do expect unless he's able to find another big dose of success another deep run at an international event i think a lot of people will start to forget that flandre was that big time contributor that guy able to utilize and abuse the graves that was at a busted point for 2021 and again it, it, it's a case of we only have so much brain power to focus on players there's always a couple stars on any world championship roster edg 2021 you're going oh yeah Viper was popping off, Scout was amazing, picked up finals MVP, JJ leveled up, Mako the icon of the LPL, and the Graves one trick. <laughs> That's where we get to. Yeah, and it, it is one of these type of ones where it, it, it's the run, really, of Worlds that I think you do forget about and you do start to lose track of it. And part of it is that Graves aspect because you're seeing it so much. You're starting to get sick of it, all these type of things where you are thinking, Oh, Viper's popping off. Scout's making his plays as you laid out. You know, Mako, he's been here forever. The loyalty. You're not getting to that top side. And for someone like Flandre, if he's not able to knock on that door of success one more time, I think he will find himself very comfortable with the rest of the crew on this list. It's too f not far enough removed yet, but add King into this list. Again, a couple years wow. down the line when it's not quite as fresh. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.